The Artemis II crew represents thousands of people working tirelessly to bring us to the stars. This is their crew. This is our crew. This is humanity's crew. Quite the announcement for quite a moment. After more than five decades, humans are getting closer to returning to the moon. But here's my question. Why does the moon matter? So yesterday was all about announcing uh, the team of astronauts who will blast off into outer space, leaving Earth's orbit and making their way to the moon. It's a team of four embarking on the Artemis II mission, that's what it's called, launching uh, not this November, but November next year, 2024. I'm Christina Cook. I'm a mission specialist. I'm Jeremy Hansen. I'm a mission specialist. I'm Victor Glover. I'm the pilot. I'm Reed Wiseman. I'm the commander for the Artemis II mission to the moon. To the moon. To the moon. To the moon. Now, in case that looks familiar... Okay, but seriously, uh, the team itself is one of the reasons this announcement was seen as such a big deal. The first person of color, the first woman on a lunar mission. I think it's fantastic to see uh, the crew announcement today. Four incredibly qualified individuals. And I think kids can look at this crew and say, there's somebody that I can identify with in that crew. Also, the first Canadian. In the entire history of our species, 300,000 years, there have been 24 people that have left Earth orbit. 12 of them walked on the surface of the moon. Every single one of them was American. This is the first time ever that anybody who wasn't from the United States has gone beyond Earth orbit. So consider how big a deal this is for Jeremy Hansen. He's the Canadian. He was first chosen for astronaut training by the Canadian Space Agency in 2009. Like, he's been training for this for 14 years, and he's finally getting his chance to blast off. I can't recall a period in my life when I didn't want to be an astronaut. For as long as I can remember, I was fascinated by space exploration. There were a number of challenges in the recruitment campaign. We went to the Navy's battle damage simulator, and they gave us one day of training on how to fight floods in this amazing simulator they have. You have rooms that are with raging fires or like a barbecue and you're, you're using a fire hose to, to try and put out this fire that can never be put out. It's really important that astronauts are comfortable in a water environment. They need to have reasonable swimming skills. Toothbrushing in a cave. This expedition for us is very similar to life on the International Space Station because we're doing science in this cave on behalf of scientists who aren't here. Okay, so that's all pretty intense. The, the technology, though, also makes this mission pretty special. Canada plays a key role there. We are going to be contributing another robotic arm that will be very much powered by artificial intelligence that will be on what's called the Lunar Gateway, which is a small orbiting space station that orbits around the moon. So that's another important contribution that Canada is making, as well as developing a lunar rover and other equipment that will be used on the moon on a moon base. But also think about how much technology has changed since the last time humanity went to the moon. It's been 50 plus years since the final mission of the Apollo program came back to Earth. This program is so different from the Apollo program in the past. We need to have a different type of technology now. We know more. We have computers, much more sophisticated uh, ways of looking at how to circle the moon and come back. It's all new and it's all different. And that's why it's so exciting. So let's explain the mission, then we'll get into why it matters. We are going to launch from Kennedy Space Center through the work of the Exploration Ground Systems team we're gonna hear the words, go for launch. On top of the most powerful rocket NASA's ever made, the Space Launch System. And we're gonna ride that rocket for eight minutes into Earth orbit. We're not gonna to go to the moon right away. We're gonna stay in an amazing high orbit, reaching a peak of tens of thousands of miles while we test out all the systems on Orion and even see how it maneuvers in space. And then, if everything looks good, we're heading to the moon. Yeah. 
So let's be clear here. Th this mission involves four astronauts doing a lunar flyby. So they'll go around the moon, but not on it. The plan is, if this mission, Artemis 2, goes well, Artemis 3 could be, you know, about getting humans back onto the lunar surface, which could happen as early as 2025. Uh, Artemis 1 went just within the last several months. Yeah, nobody on board, just to test that the rocket worked and the spaceship worked. So all of those systems had to be tested. That was Artemis 1. Artemis 2 is now to, to test it much more fulsomely with people on board, the life support uh, system, all of the maneuvering systems, all of the technologies that they're going to need for all of the missions that are coming. And Artemis 3 or 4, that's where we're going to put people down on the surface of the moon and transitioning from, you know, the footprints and flags of the 1960s and 70s to actually start building a full infrastructure. Yeah, so Chris Hatfield is basically talking about building a moon base because, you know, just getting to the moon isn't as useful as staying on the moon. Like in the future, scientists could work for weeks, even months there. And according to NASA, there's big value in turning the moon into a kind of staging area for more ambitious missions, like colonizing Mars. We choose to go back to the moon and then on to Mars, and we're going to do it together. Because in the 21st century, NASA explores the cosmos with international partners. But perspective matters here, right? This new chapter is just the beginning. Feels like the work too has only just gotten started for what NASA hopes will be an exciting new era in space exploration and discovery. It will carry more than astronauts. Artemis II will carry the hopes of millions of people around the world.